Ooh, what's up guys, and welcome to another video from me, the Scarander. And uh, today we're gonna talk about, of course, the Legendary Trios Part 2. And um, this video is, of course, dedicated to uh, the Legendary Dogs, really. Even though Raikou technically is a cat, but uh, Raikou, Entei, and Sukyun are the roaming trios of, of course, the second generation or gold, silver, or crystal. Um, we're gonna first talk about you know memories of them before we're actually going into how they develop throughout the generations, and you know what tier represented them, what capabilities they have today. Um, when it comes to memories of these guys, um, I'm I was fairly young still, um, could have been around 12 when Gold Silver came out. I thought these guys were real annoying. Um, they were so hard to catch. Um, they fixed the issue with Sukyun later on in Crystal, where you actually did have a event battle with it. But Raikou and Entei always been um, hard to follow. You know, you couldn't fly to the damn destination we're at. You really, really have just to be lucky and be at the right time, right spot. And even so, they still run away with the first turn. So this is actually the first reason I just um, use Mean Look. Which was uh, something, you know, that was a fairly new move in this generation, and Minilux probably was only used for that purpose alone. Um, of course, Pirate Song was a thing, I guess, but I used it for these guys, uh, because if you even get these guys asleep, they still run the turn afterwards. Um, it was one of those weird things. Um, they were super hard to catch, and uh, just fairly annoying, and uh, yeah. I am. Um, I used them a lot. I knew Raikou was really good. Um, Entei falls really short in Generation Two. Actually, until Generation Five, I believe it was actually kind of bad. Uh, and Sukyun was a, definitely a wall, um, and it got really good in Generation Three. Probably got pretty much unbeatable in Generation Three. But uh, those are my thoughts, at least. You know, the things I remember. Like I said, they were not really that much used in the meta. And uh, if we were to look into their development, we're actually gonna. First, look into, of course, Raikou. Um, Raikou is probably the one that is pretty much defining because it kind of stood tall throughout the generations. Uh, it's been fairly, fairly, fairly bulky for our um, <laughs> electric type. It definitely was a better electric type than the Zapdos were, and we're unrivaled this generation uh, in general. It was no new, um, it was no new electric mod that was even faster than this one outside of Electrode. And Raichu did not get its extra speed until Generation 6. And even then, Raichu is still faster, a lot of special attack. Um, didn't have the unique moves, it only had Thunderbolt and Thunder as its distinguishable stronger attack to have access to hidden power was introduced in Generation. Uh, generation 3 in Ruby Sapphire. Um, not a lot actually is mentioned here. Um, being one of the best special sweeper. I do believe this is the generation where we get the extra sensory. Um, reset, no, that goes for Shaptos, sorry. Uh, no event here, still OU. Uh, Diamond Pearl. Uh, actually, was blacklisted, so it did move down a bit. Uh, once upon a time, Raikou was one of the most dominant special attackers in the entire game. And uh, Ignore would be pocket <laughs> suicide. Unfortunately, this time was long past, and the 8vg meta game, which Addition of Choice Scar, Toxic Spikes, and a monster <laughs> monsterfully powerful attacker such as Heatron, <laughs> Raikou has been largely left in the dust. Wow, I see. Um, that is interesting. So, definitely fall from grace, though we still have access to Coal Mine. And uh, let's see. Yeah, it did get this generation coverage moves such as Aura Svea and Coal Mine. Uh, or um, Shadow Ball. She got Shadow Ball before that, though. So, so, just me missing out. But in, it definitely did fall in Generation uh, 4, how about that? And in black and white, let's say, yeah, it's Yu Yu, it actually did fall a bit. Huh, that's actually kind of interesting. I thought Raikou was a solid Pokemon throughout the generations. Um, it should be really good in Yu Yu here, though. Um, nothing really large here. Um, it's walled by Snorlax, got access to Aura Sphere, Choice Scarf Crocodile, and Choice Scarf Flygon takes it out. Yeah, a lot of those things go in. Choice Scarf probably punished this mod, though. Do bear in mind, guys, that Fryco is still fairly bulky. So while it could be. 
could be bad it's still you know it I still give it you know a thumbs up and of course Aura Sphere if you want to use that you have to be a rash nature with pretty bad IVs however so I can kind of get why it was shoved aside for a while uh, but obviously an X and Y things have been looking different it's now um OU Pokemon actually and uh, yeah I am guessing it's because of the stronger mods you know you're such a talent flame that this guy actually got to be used for real um, and of course Assault Vest is a um, very very nice niche to it uh, so it's OU today, uh, has been sinking in previous generations and I had no idea about that. I thought Entei was be the one that definitely was the worst of these guys, but the Raikou actually did fall a bit. Uh, but it's back in OU, um, it's definitely staying there for the time being. And it's not general very very powerful mom. Now let's look at Entei. Now Entei has a very very sad story, um, a really really sad story to be honest. Uh, Entei, or until generation... What is that? I believe four. Uh, there was no special, but uh, as of then, fire fire moves were oriented to special attacks. And uh, the worst part about that is that Raikou or Raikou Entei had uh, nothing really to hurt Mons with his physical dominating attack. It actually, and that's exactly the sad part. Its strongest move back then was Return. Or I believe even Double Edge. Thinking about it. But that was about it. It had nothing more, and it uh, was pretty lackluster. And um, it is actually is in BL here, uh, which I fear is actually too good for it, uh, because it's terrible. It really is a bad mon. Uh, let's see what happens in Ruby Sapphire. It still is a BL. Got a nice sprite though. Um, let's see. Enter has a poor move pool, a defensive typing, countered by Pokemon on nearly every team. Additionally, he has nothing special. Sukun Yurashi is a better substitute Calm Mind user. Blaziken and Houndoom are better fire types in stand standard plays. Nonetheless, Entei less fragile in the later twos and gets passive Blissey. Um Alright. So to give it some credit, though obviously it's. Uh, Calm Mind sub seems to be kind of a sad excuse for it. So, right, here comes the split. Um, and I think this is where it dies off, yeah, it's <laughs> BL2. So it's logged into UU, though it, uh, it's close to being RU. Uh, like many fire types, Entei is a Pokemon that proves the great of all around stats, but it has them distributed rather poorly. The fact is, the move pool is horrible, doesn't help either. Even the release of the moves tend event to still faces tough competition of Arcanine. However, while Entei appears to be shallow, you still can fill a niche that no other Pokemon can. It's, uh, it is only the Pokemon in you outside of Dance Bars and Drifling who can use uh, set up <laughs> one on one substitutes that use Calm Mind, making it a deadly special sweeper while access to Stone Edge differentiates Entei from Entei or from Arcanine. And as a physical attacker, overall, it's still a force to be reckoned with, so it must never ride Entei too harshly. Alright, so it's probably the only who isn't broken by IC. It can't be break by um, seismic tosses. That's why it was so in that nah ah that's why I get why people are using it with substitutes. It, it's not an easy break. It actually can set up against Blissey. Huh. That's kinda cool though. So I do believe that black and white's gonna have that thing, are you? I'm pretty much sure it's things fall. Yeah. Cause I do remember seeing Entei in RU when I was starting uh, recognizing the meta game when I actually was sitting up. So after spending the last decade being complete loud class, first of its fellow legendary beasts, the later Arcanine ain't finally found a home in RU with the most rival being safely locked away in in the higher tiers. And it's free to rampage through RU unhindered, high attack, high speed, stats, playable it's extreme speed makes sense. They finally one of the best physical attackers in the tier. But can also use Calm Mind to become one of the RU most dangerous and overlocked special sweeper. It has a shallow move pole, um, is a force to be reckoned with with Adamant Nature, comes with the event move, hinder it to be hindered to some extent, but not overlook Entei. Its power vers versatility makes it a Pokemon every successful team must consider. Huh. How about that? So, while it was lower to RU, it still is somewhat of a sunshine story. And you all know what do happen in X and Y. Sacred Fire got introduced. 
and yeah now this guy became all kinds of dangerous and so Entei turned out to be quite a niche it definitely is a sunshine story for it he's back in UU he's a solid mon in UU for that reason so yeah that's actually kind of cool um the last one we're gonna talk about is of course the Sukune I think this guy is very steadfast I think when could it even be moved from OU? It starts off in OU, obviously. It's a bulky Roman and Blastoise. I remember this thing being in all the teams, really. I hated facing this because I couldn't kill it. Rest, sleep, talk was a very good thing on it. And um, I think people use this with curse. And uh, yeah, yuck. I think it was only walled by or dented by special attackers, obviously. But outside of that, Sukum was super annoying to deal with. I hated it. In Ruby Sapphire, it even got worse <laughs> because it got cold mined. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, um, they, yeah, that, that's like the first set we get here too. Um, once it got cold mined, this thing just got dangerous. I don't know how this thing held off, but I know that in um, in um, Generation Three. Sukun were all over the place, always with the call mindsets. Hated it. Let's see, in Diamond Pearl, it was still OU. Uh, once upon a time, in a generation far, far away, Sukun was one of the best Pokemon in the game. Uh, Diamond Pearl changed that due to game subtlety. It has brought many powerful attackers and new items that have made Sukun fall for it ever so slightly, but limit like. Uh, Alright. Um, so, obviously, new items made Sukun bit worse but it's still good um, and so you can only have one reliable set it, it really is the set to use um, call mine sub you know it still was relevant um, in black and white it was oh it actually fell to you you is it that bad huh let's see because now skull is introduced was it generation 4 no I think it was generation I think it was in Generation 5 this got introduced, so I think it should have been better. But yeah, obviously a lot of mods was introduced that actually forced that out. And um, hasn't changed since X and Y. Uh, though I, I will obviously say this. It's set is still not bad. That set is still so annoying, so tough, I hate it. And I think most people actually do. Uh, Sukun is super, super annoying. And uh, got so many good skills to be used until it but obviously one working set is uh, the one set that came with the uh, generation 3 and uh, it's it's unstoppable it really is there is really nothing stopping it outside of course for switching it or hopefully having a physical electric type we can take it out but yeah that's uh, <laughs> the later in three part two uh, I hope you guys enjoy this and I really hope you guys have some own thoughts about these five guys, five guys, three guys, wow. Um, these are probably the most successful trios um, that stand the test of time. Um, obviously, Entei is the only one to fall through the crack and through RU, but outside of that, they all have been kind of steadfast, they haven't fallen too, too far. Um, and it's not like a first generation where Articuno, for example, is falling, free falling through the tiers. And uh, these have definitely been, like I said, they've been standing in test of time. And I'll think they'll do that for, for a longer time than we ever can imagine. So, with that said, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, guys, take care. Bye.